so good morning and warmly welcome uh, to the to, uh, webinar on the environment. Uh, on behalf of Regional Development Agency of the Ljubljana Urban Region, the organizer and the Star Cities Partnership, I wish you all another successful day. And I'm sure that we will hear uh, that we will hear inspiring good practices also today. And uh, hopefully you could use um, some hints from these good practices also at your daily work. Yesterday we spoke about uh, all three sustainable principles, the environmental, economic, and uh, sociocultural aspects. While today our focus will be more on only one of those, um, of these uh, dimensions uh, on the environment. Um, as you know, many times we have challenges with finding the right balance between sufficient tourism development and protection of uh, nature. Therefore, our speakers will try to answer the following uh, questions. Uh, can tourism play an important role of environment and heritage protection? Uh, do we see tourism in the role of promoting and uh, uh, promoting the protection of natural ecosystems and biodiversity, as well as responsible behavior? Uh, beside we will also uh, uh, see the, uh, or hear actually the initiatives that spend the tourism revenue on protecting natural environment. Um, also events that celebrate the river and promote sustainable tourism will be presented. A big pleasure to be part of this uh, seminary. And uh, I'm not living in Saint-Maur de Fosse, as you said, but uh, somewhere else in France, but I'm very linked to the people of this Saint-Maur city because our big jump has been applied, applied since several years in this beautiful city near Paris on the Marne River. Thank you again that they invited me to give me the possibility to tell you more about our project. A little bit uh, special project, I think, compared to the, all the rest uh, you had in your very complete program during these days. I'm very sorry about my English. I hope the best for you. Yes, I wish you the best for you, for you and with my English. Uh, hope it comes through. Um, I am native Swiss um, from Switzerland. By the way, you can see behind me um, the place from where I come. It's the city of Zurich, Zurich in Switzerland where swimming in the river is something completely normal. We do every day, every summer, from the morning to the evening. You will swim between the Swiss banks, you imagine, in the center of the city, yes? So um, this is the topic from my presentation. My name is uh, Roberto Epple, as you said, I'm a head and founder of European Rivers Network, uh, which has a big number of project linked to a river and their restoration and protection, but also to their promotion. And uh, one of these projects is uh, to celebrate rivers, celebrate rivers and promote sustainable tourism, yes, uh, in the urban area. It's something new for us because traditionally we were working more on the protection on the natural rivers. Uh, but since certain time, as you know, the quality of the water in our uh, freshwater systems is uh, more or less in all the countries becoming better and better. And it allows uh, to think on swimming in the rivers, even in urban areas. So um, maybe we should just go to the first slide. And uh, yes, okay, you can see, you can see something Maybe I have to translate it, which gives a good introduction to what we are, what we are saying, what we are speaking about. It's in French. It's, it says, for the Loire River, which is a big river in France, as you know, you know, you know and you can read there, I love you, my Loire, okay? And you can see a guy pissing in this river. And this is a little bit, the, the departure of our idea when we started our big jump, because 
We all love rivers, all urban rivers, rivers wherever, yes? I don't know anybody who don't like and love rivers, but we don't respect them, yes? But we piss in like this guy here. So this is a little bit the idea we have, uh, we had in the beginning to work on the relation between man and its rivers, because finally he will drink this water in which he's pissing in, and in this water, many, many other uh, lives are in aquatic lives, I would say. So maybe start with the, yeah, by the way, this guy who has uh, made this cartoon is one of the guy who has been killed by the terrorism acts. It was uh, Mr. Wolinsky. And um, he was very happy that he did his work for us before he, he died. So, yeah, okay. So we can maybe go to the first pictures. Yes, we are speaking about the big jump, which is a kind of a swimming day, European ride, swimming day in open swimming days in rivers. Yes, we celebrate this since a very long time, all the way through Europe. Um, in the beginning, it was in the in natural rivers, let's say out of urban areas, and more and more it becomes now also possible to celebrate rivers through big jump in urban areas. A beginning was, by the way, you know it maybe, in France, uh, some years ago, the idea was born called Paris, uh, Paris Plage, yes, uh, Paris uh, Beach. And there is a, there is a, a kind of, uh, of cur a word I use, I say in France, Paris Plage c'est bon, Paris Nage c'est mieux. That means Paris Beach is beautiful, but swimming in Paris would be much better. So this is the objective also in Paris we have through Big Champ. Yeah, okay, we have, you, you see some pictures here, some, some uh, posters from several uh, events uh, which has happened in the last year. We come back on that a little bit later. By the way, shall somebody could check my time uh, when I arrive maybe five minutes before the end. Could you tell me? Yeah, we aim uh, <clears throat> we aim with this project to celebrate the rivers to make people re relearn the river. What is a river and finding a new balance between the use of the of the rivers. As you know, many river has been used for for transportation, has been used for power point power uh, electricity power production, or or used for several other uses. But in generally, the pit, the people has been just forbidden to go into rivers. It was forbidden in many urban areas to go to rivers. This is the end because today we have to start to think about to share the river for all different uses. Next one. Also, we make the, we want to make uh, <coughs> the WFD understandable to citizens. This is the water frame directive. This is the general European law about water and water management and water quality, yes? Uh, making a public monitoring of progress of the implementation of this law to protect the water. More you can swim in rivers, better the public policy was in the past, okay? It's easy, yes? Uh, if men are swimming in rivers, that means the rivers are becoming clean, yes? So easy to say. And we want also <clears throat> inducing a discussion about this uh, European law and the rivers to make it more known. Next. Should I make a sign maybe just to, to change the slides? The Water Frame Directive is the main law for water protection in the EU legislation. Uh, it is a, it's a tool to achieve the good status for all the rivers and lakes in Europe, including water bodies, as we call it, in cities. But this legislative alone is not enough to reach this goal. It's essential to gain people's support for it. It's broad public support all over Europe so WFT make never work. This has been written in a very known European water management when we started our big jump program. Next, please, please. It is an inspiring project that captures the essence of the current water protection legislation into a single public act at one day, at one time, people will jump into rivers all over in Europe in the same time. This is the good idea because we share water, we are doing something together. And uh, it is uh, every year, it's the second Sunday in July when we organize that. And 
it is at three o'clock p.m. Uh, European time. Um, but of course, there are activities in some uh, places which start even in the morning or the day before. But there is a, a precise moment, it's three o'clock in the afternoon, where something happens. Come. In a nutshell, the big jump is European. Yeah, it's European wide event. Could you come back? Sorry. Where people reclaim their environment and demonstrate their wish to have clean and living rivers again. Okay. Go forward, please. A little bit about the evolution. Big jump started in uh, the Elbe River. It's a German river. It was the most polluted river when uh, Germany has been unified in 89. Most polluted river. For example, in the city of Dresden or other ones, even Hamburg, where the river flows through, it was not possible. It was impossible even to think that somewhere we could be able to swim in this river. It was so polluted, yes. And only 12 years or 13 years later in 2002, the public politics has uh, had big results. Uh, it made it possible, it was possible again to swim uh, in the rivers, in the Elbe River from the source to the S3 in Hamburg. We had spectacular results of these public policies. Uh, and you could eat again fishes from this river with something unbelievable for people uh, which, which was uh, living on the river before in 89. Unbelievable, just unbelievable. So you have to celebrate the river again because you can use the river, you can go in the river, you can swim in it, you can eat fish from the river, you have life in the rivers. So we had a big success on this Elbe Bade Tag, as it was called. Uh, it was a common event from the spring to the estuary, over 55 places it has been identified where the event has happened including seven city, urban, urban, uh, city and urban areas. In 2005, this till 2015, we, we upscaled the event to a European event, yes. It uh, has been so successful as in these uh, years 2005, 10 and 15, we had sometimes five, 600 events in Europe in the same time with two, 300,000 people participating in in different ways. Excuse me, Roberto, uh, five more minutes. Thank you. How much? Five. Oh, are you sure? Yes. Do, we have a, do you have a Swiss watch? <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. 2018 and 21, we have uh, done, then started to bring the big jump into urban areas. And we want to have, especially in 2024, 24 big events in several cities in Europe, especially in Paris, through an urban swimming festival. Why not? And uh, participate. And in Paris, we will have through the Olympic uh, Games then the possibility to show up that swimming is becoming possible in cities. Next one, please. So we have go through first. This is Hamburg in 1930. You can see swimming in rivers in such cities was something you, normal. Go on. We had this first uh, big Elbe basting day, let's say, with, uh, next pl picture, please, with over 55 places along the whole river with 100,000 people participating in. Next. These were all the places in Town in 2005 where the events has happened, blue. The other colors shows up the possibilities for the future. So we have more than 800 places identified, identified in Europe where swimming could be again possibly huge. Next. These were some examples, please go through from this day, always at two o'clock. It was at the time at two o'clock, now it's three o'clock. Please go on, just next one, Portugal. Yeah, even, even some places they showed up, the water quality was not here, yes. This is in the city in, in Spain. Um, it wasn't possible to swim in, so they were going in with this protection uh, clothes. Next one. We had even for peace, uh, a beautiful uh, action in Palestina and Israel and in, in, in the, uh, the Jordan River, 
So we can see that the big champ idea has been taken over all over in Europe and outside. Next. Media, I go over, please. Maybe a bit to give you an idea how many participants we had, what kind of participation and organizers we have. Mostly we had NGOs uh, on, uh, <clears throat> as you can see in these colors. Um, what is interesting for you is that we had about public authorities about 7% of our all events. 7% was public authorities, cities or villages. And in future, this will be more and more and more. We had over 1,050 organizers in the whole uh, period of this cycle of big jumps from 2002 to 2018. Next one. This is the participation from different countries. It shows just up that it's all over in Europe. Let's go to the next one. Not, uh, it was in 2017 where we started together with uh, Samor to have the idea to think about uh, swimming in the metropole of Paris, Grand Paris, Big Paris. It was a, be a beautiful symposium where we showed up, showed up that the future of a river uh, uh, in cities uh, is a good future. Quality is coming back and uh, we, could sh we could think about this idea to bring rivers back to the cities and to the cities and to the people and to use the river as a as a kind of of a vector for development also of tourism and quality of life next one this shows just some events uh, this was on one of the first uh, events we had in in on the one river in samor de fosse where it was uh, just not possible to swing only 20 years ago. Now it is becoming possible. Every year they organized, even between the big years, 2005, 10, 15, even every year they had a local event. And today the idea is accepted by everybody that in some more swimming will become something normal and possible. Next one. This is in Nevers on the Loire River where the city of Nevers showed up. Uh, invited people to come to the beach every year in summertime for a limited time. People and citizens can go uh, to the Loire River. Next one. These are other examples. In Paris, we started to swim in the Bassin de la Villette. The right side, you have the car or in France in the Lot River. Yet there you can't swim in the river itself, for instance, but they have installed a kind of swimming pool. As you can see, the same in Berlin on the Spree. And in Hamburg, they started to swim really between big tankers. As you can see, there is an area for swimming close to the center of the city. Next one. In Dresden, it is becoming possible to swim every year. More than 800 swimmers swim through the city. This is now a kind of normal activity after years and years and years where it was forbidden to go to the river. Next one. And this is Zurich, where I'm born, as I showed you, where as a young guy, I swam just in the river every day. It is normal and still now it has never been stopped. You can see there are all historical houses here, installation of this place for swim. And I know in several European cities, you had the same thing, yeah? Uh, even in Ljubljana, I have seen photos uh, where you had swimming areas before in the city. Next one, please. This is a big project in Berlin, it's on the way, on the Spray Canal, really in the center of the city, on the island of, um, in, it's called the, the Museum Island, yes, really in the center of the city, there's a break going on, where you will be able to swim in that uh, channel, in really center of the city, and in these places, before they, this project has been, has been presented, we had during years, big jump events, just to show that it is possible now. And now the local governments and the city has taken over the idea and there is some money to realize this project. So we will be able, I think even in only one or two years, two years to swim in the center of Berlin. It will rise the attractivity of the city for the local citizens, but also of course for visitors, gives a positive image to this city. 
Next one. Yeah, because I have only a little bit of time and it's over, I would just remember you that the next big jump will happen in 11 July at 3 p.m. And it's still time to go to our website from tomorrow on to say, yes, we are doing one event, maybe just information showing up, telling people what happens in the historical time when people were swimming in the river, showing up the opportunity just to make public work to help people to understand that rivers in the city are important. Rivers in the city are source of pleasure of health and they are also a vector of development, but not over development. Yes, we just, just have the idea, remember in the beginning of my speech, not to piss in it, yes, but just to keep it in a good status in order to have the possibility to swim in future and to give healthy rivers in cities also to our young and future citizens. citizens. So this was uh, just an overview about what could be done with Big Jump. I hope we are maybe through your network, uh, we will be able to have a kind of sub network of cities working on the idea to make swim again possible in rivers. Thank you very much. Thank you, Roberto. Uh, we are going uh, to Kaunas then to Lithuania uh, with the uh, uh, next uh, good practice. Uh, let's celebrate the river. This is the community festival and it's happening along the rivers in Kaunas and Kaunas district. And the goal of this festival is to develop the dialogue related to the sustainable river tourism forms and activities. So now I'd, I'd like to invite uh, Romena Puikte to tell us more about the event. Hello, everyone. Thank you very much. Uh, my name is Romana Puikita, and I'm from Kaunas, and I represent the community initiative Shveskime uh, Upe. Let's celebrate the river. So I'm very glad to meet uh, uh, people who also think the same way as we. Please, next slide. Uh, these are the main keywords uh, that best describe uh, our activities and the process and the expected results creative and cultural community river routes and uh, new identities of local communities and co-creation. And I will speak about them uh, during the next slides. Uh, we are a young initiative established only last year, the beginning of 2020. Uh, we met uh, three members uh, from uh, different uh, local communities and uh, from uh, the old town and the Viliampole. Uh, the old part of the Kona city is located in the, uh, uh, we are two biggest Lithuanian uh, rivers merge in Eris and Namunas, and uh, the Viliampola neighborhood is across the Neris River. So uh, we say that uh, we are neighbors across the river and that uh, the Neris uh, doesn't separate us, but it connects us and we become neighbors. Uh, so what we did the first, we applied for the CONAS uh, 2022 uh, call for Fluxus Labas community initiatives uh, with the idea to organize the uh, Let's Celebrate the River event, which would be created by the city citizens uh, themselves. Uh, we had a view that uh, Neris and Namunas uh, rivers in our city connect separate di districts of our city into one city. So we wanted to look for new identities of local communities as we uh, realized that uh, not many people notice, even notice that there are rivers in the city. They just got used to, to, to this view, <laughs> crossing the bridges. And uh, we wanted to bring back people to the rivers and uh, looking how it could be and uh, creating new cultural phenomena and uh, cultural river roots with uh, local communities and citizens. And uh, we wanted to apply Fluxus principles. This is co-creation activities, uh, having adventure, getting out of the daily routine, simplicity, uh, doing uh, uh, yourself and uh, mm, 
uh, inviting people to create uh, because we think that uh, all can be creators. Next slide, please. So after the first year, we look through the uh, what we have planned, what uh, activities uh, were implemented, and what results we had. Uh, sure, it was not so easy because it was uh, when we wanted to start the activities, the uh, quarantine, uh, the pandemic situation started. So we had to change a little bit, but the, our aims and the um, objectives didn't change. So the aim of the Schweizke Meope initiative is to encourage the use of rivers, their waters and shores for cultural events, community meetings, and the creation of new artistic phenomena. Uh, we see that rivers in the city connect us. And as Mr. Roberto said, uh, we also see that uh, uh, let's live the rivers. Yeah, let's celebrate our rivers. <laughs> so our activities uh, are put into four objectives. First, we uh, uh, approach to city residents, raising their awareness, bringing them back to the rivers, to, as to the public spaces, and uh, engaging in the cultural activities. The second one is working with local communities that are based uh, near the city rivers and uh, to encourage them to become local hosts and uh, creators in these public spaces near the rivers and to look uh, for new or forgotten identities. Uh, still, there are a lot of people who uh, remember uh, what, how they were celebrating the rivers and to make these local communities visible through cultural and artistic means. And uh, also, we are trying, we're inviting artists and creators uh, to create uh, some arts and uh, culture um, phenomena in the cities, uh, rivers, and on the riverside, and to work with local communities to engage them in creative activities, in art processes, to create something together, and at least once a year to organize a big river event bringing together local communities uh, to celebrate the city's rivers together, to develop uh, new cultural river routes and uh, jointly uh, implement it. So next slide, please. Uh, so uh, the activities of the last year were divided into uh, small activities during the summertime, July and August, and uh, uh, organizing a big event uh, at the end of the summer. So uh, uh, for these uh, smaller events, it was like invitations to the citizens to newly discover rivers and river sites in the cities. In the city, so we organized uh, several walks with the naturalists along the nearest river, as it is the Natura 2000 area. Organized with the participants of the training program, who will become guides. Uh, also uh, organized one object short to us. Uh, where the participants could discover objects and environments uh, of the rivers in the city and the environments. And it was very interesting because we found out that usually we just pass by the car, um, some objects, and maybe some later. <laughs> I will, because we see cultural signs even on the uh, streets, but uh, usually people do not go by themselves. So a lot of people were glad uh, of these short tours. Uh, we also made separate uh, uh, small events where we invited people uh, to sing, dance, and uh, creative writing workshops and making handicrafts. Uh, usually they were people who say, no, I'm not singing, or I'm afraid to sing, and also invited those who are singing. It was free uh, entrance, who, everyone who to, wanted to participate, they could participate, so we had a very good time together. These were like uh, community gatherings, but uh, the people came from the whole city. We also organized in the middle of the summer beach volleyball tournament with the mm, uh, youth initiative. Uh, there were more activities and live music, and it was a very nice event. So all the events were organized only outdoors, no one inside. This was our aim that uh, because it was uh, quarantine time, so it was better for us only outdoors, and we wanted only near the river, all activities near the river. 
so overall it was 29 small events participated uh, 260 participants directly involved um, and uh, the conductors of the small events who led the, these gatherings where we are uh, singing and dancing and writing uh, did that on voluntary basis so, please next slide and at the end of this summer we organized a big event it was the first cultural river route it was uh, developed with the sit active citizens uh, of the city and with the local communities and cultural organizations. We just uh, invited uh, to come everyone who would like to uh, make the ideas realized during this event. And uh, you can see the route on the uh, right corner at the, uh, the bottom. Uh, we chose only for the first year, we chose only Neres River just to check uh, uh, for ourselves also. And uh, uh, the route was made with cultural stops on the river banks where people could, could stop and draw or make some ceramics or sports activities. And uh, Everyone could uh, going by the river, kayaking, canoeing, and rafting uh, could uh, meet uh, at the very finish. And all, already in Namunas, after the conference of the two rivers, uh, there was a possibility also to join for cyclists and pedestrians, as uh, there is a, a bicycle path and for pedestrians along the river. And. Uh, directly involved we are about 70 participants and it was quite uh, a number for us for the first year especially that uh, two two days before the event the quarantine restrictions mm, we are made uh, more strict so uh, we were we, maybe we could not manage more people for the first year but a lot of people also joined on the banks uh, from the system and I would like to show you a, a video, uh, a short video from this event. Uh, could you please turn on it? Uh, yes. Romana, only to tell you five more minutes left. Ah, okay. Mm -hmm. I hope you enjoyed this video. So the next slide, please. Uh, next slide, yeah, mm -hmm. thank you. So for this year, uh, we are planning, uh, uh, so we reviewed what we have uh, did uh, last year and uh, uh, we decided that the big event should be organized in springtime uh, and would be like uh, opening of cultural events uh, in the rivers. So we are developing now new community river roads uh, in Namunas also, that uh, citizens could uh, go yeah, from where they live. There are some places here, yeah, but um, will be two starts and one finish that they will meet. And um, we, have, we are also organizing in the middle of the summer in July 23, the Plein Air uh, Festival, 
and it will be organized with local communities and three different places uh, and during one day, uh, just to see also how Namunas looks uh, from different places at the one day. And uh, so we would like to continue with summer activities, discovering nature and uh, with our objects and singing, dancing, writing, making handicrafts and uh, outdoor games also. So next slide. Um, so uh, about funding and sustainability, um, uh, we were thinking, uh, had some ideas for this year also, but uh, couldn't do this uh, because of uh, this quarantine situation. So we have plans for other years. <laughs> we hope to realize it. Uh, we would like to make a like, kind of cultural ticket uh, for the citizens who are not directly involved in the cultural activities, but they could buy a ticket to the event and uh, with the, all uh, cultural activities included, uh, just uh, that they also could participate and find river in a different way to see uh, the, how it looks from the riverside and uh, to experience some new experiences. Also, we would like to organize uh, the finish like uh, where people meet from different rivers. The, they meet in a, a small cultural town, also made from only for one day with the exhibitions and with the, uh, creative activities and uh, joint uh, song and dance. <laughs> and uh, we would also like to continue working with local communities for new identities and working with creators and artists and doing that and uh, making new co-creative yeah, uh, works. So our main supporter is the CONAS 2022 Fluxus Labas program, who also applied for Lithuanian Council for Culture and received funding for the premier. And here you can see three uh, smaller logos that we are three communities local and the others are the main also partners for the other activities but we have much more that uh, these are only directly involved and responsible so that's it thank you very much thank you romena so we are going um now to the next uh, presentation, organization of big, uh, big walks as events to discover the, tori the territory from uh, France, uh, because each year Valdemar Tourism Board organizes events to discover the territory, and there are hundreds of participants, and they walk around uh, 14 kilometers. And those big books are a good opportunity to enhance the natural and cultural heritage and the living places of the territory and promote walking as just a perfect way to visit the territory. So uh, Celia Guzar from Valdemar Tourism Board, uh, you will guide us through big walks. Looking forward to the microphone is all yours. Yes. Uh, do you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. Okay, um, hello everybody, I'm Celia Guizar, and I will tell you uh, uh, about the big cultural works uh, of uh, Valdemar Tourist, Tourism Board. Uh, next, next, next slide, please. Um, the, uh, the objective uh, of the event uh, is to propose to the general public and uh, especially to the inhabitants uh, to discover the uh, urban heritage uh, in which they live. Um, uh, and uh, uh, it's uh, that permit to uh, create interactions between people and to promote um, uh, stakeholder and uh, territory of the Val de Marne. Uh, ne next slide, please. Um, so the event is uh, organized uh, over one day. And the participants uh, are invited to make a 15 kilometers uh, work during uh, which they will visit cultural places and discover different uh, stakeholders of the territory. A big, uh, a big work can welcome from uh, 300 to over uh, 1,000 participants in a day. And uh, the visits or meetings are organized in stops. In general, the hike is composed of six or seven stops. 
and uh, crossed uh, three or four different cities of the territory of Valdemar. Um, at uh, each stop, speakers uh, will tell the workers the history of the places where they are stopped and explain uh, what happens there. And uh, each uh, stops, uh, each visit lasts uh, between 15 and 30 minutes. Uh, next, please. Um, the different stops uh, can be very different. Uh, it can be an uh, industrial site, uh, like a factory or a workshop. It can be an artistic place, like uh, an uh, art gallery or a place of spectacle. It can be an historical site or um, an archi architectural or urban heritage or a mediation on the natural environment like uh, the river or a sensitive natural park. Next, please. Um, to, to participate in this hike, in this work, uh, it is necessary to uh, register. Participants choose a departure time and uh, will live with a group supervised by volunteers, offering different departure times and groups uh, allows us to control the flow of participants and to facilitate the arrival of the different groups on the cultural or on the natural steps of the world. Uh, you can see in this picture, you have a lot of um, big groups uh, during the stops. The next, please. Uh, here you, here you can see an example of a, of a route, of a big work. Um, it's a perfect Google view. Um, the route of the hike is uh, marked on the day of the event. So it is uh, possible to do it uh, independently, but uh, people uh, prefer to work with a group to meet other people. There is a lot of interaction between the workers during uh, the hike. Next, please. Uh, I'm sorry, it's very little. You, you can see um, an example of the same route, but uh, that is a paper uh, uh, give to the workers during the work. And uh, we can see the route and we can see the different stop with, um, with, uh, with, the, cultural, um, with the cultural stops. So the, the route of the hike uh, is... Um, is uh, sorry, excuse me, I'm a, I'm a little lost. <laughs> Next one, please. The work is uh, supervised by volunteers from the French Federation of Hiking. The volunteers make the supervision and the, the safety of the groups of workers during the event. Because uh, the high is in a uh, real urban environment with a uh, with, um, with, the, don with the, the constraints of the city, uh, it's necessary to work in on the sidewalk, it's necessary to crossing the roads. So uh, we need volunteers to, um, to supervise the groups. And uh, with, uh, with the volunteers from the French Federation of Hiking, uh, during the, con the construction of the route, we locate uh, public toilets for workers etc etc so uh, the big work uh, is a pure practice of slow tourism because everything is done on foot um valdeman tourism board um, manage the registration the regis sorry for my english the the registration of the participants uh, the reception of the workers on the day of the events and the good progress of the hike all day long for all the groups of workers. The hike is organized in a partnership with the cities we crossed, which provide garbage cans along the route so that participants do not throw away waste, in particular on the place of the big collective picnic, um, because you, you have a lot of people uh, in, the same, in the same place at the same time. 
Uh, next, please. So, uh, Valdeman Tourism Board uh, coordinates and finances all the events. Uh, we finance the uh, coffee reception at the start of the work, the festive re reception at the, at the end of the work, and all the sing posts along the work's route. Uh, to organize uh, this event, we solicit the different sites and speakers who welcome the public during the cultural, stay, the cultural stops. We take care of the cost of the services of each cultural speaker in general. Uh, the services is organized in the form of partnerships. So we pay the partner a fee. For example, um, we pay for the partner's meal, partner's meals and transport cuts and offer them visibility and communication services free of charge um, during the promotions of the event. In exchange, the partner welcomes the participants of the work for free. <clears throat> uh, the, the events, the, 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 the organization of the big work um, allows us to contact a new partner uh, with whom we did not work before and uh, to think with them about other projects in the future. The cities, uh, the cities crossed by the work uh, lend us for free the material we need, garbage cans, uh, barns, tables, etc. And that is possible thanks to a permanent relational work with uh, the cities. So this event, uh, it is an inexpensive event to organize because it is possible thanks to, to, to human time. All the communication of the events is met by a uh, Valdeman Tourism Board because the promotion of the territory is one of our missions, so it is still human time. Uh, next, please. Uh, so for, for in this picture, you can see uh, a coffee reception at the start of a work and have a lot of people very, very close. Uh, for the next edition, uh, we will have to think uh, about, about a new way of uh, organizing the groups in order to respect the new sanitary conditions. And uh, we will certainly have to limit the maximum number of participants in order to constitute very small groups of uh, workers, so that would be a new challenge uh, for us. Uh, next one, please. Oh, I'm finished. Th thank you. Okay, thank you. That was fast <laughs> and on time. Uh, thank you. Now, oh, sorry. Uh, now I put on the video on. Uh, so thank you, Celia. Uh, and now we are going to the last uh, presentation on behalf of Mr. Silvano Simoni, the Tiber is Beach in Rome. Um, thank you. I'm Silvano Simoni. I'm a delegate of the mayor of Rome, municipality of Rome. And thank you for inviting me for this uh, important event. And uh, I'm going to show you the Tiberis. That is uh, the first, our first intervention of the redevelopment and management of the Tiber River uh, by a public institution. It is important to underline that it was also the first concrete manifestation of a collaboration between institutions and representative subjects of active citizenship, as well as private business world whose stakeholders was to take the responsibility in the redevelopment and the enhancement of the Tiber. The public administration has looked for and found partners with whom to share experiences and projects to supervise together. Next slide, please. The current administration of Rome believes in the importance of possibility of giving new life to the Tiber, which for two many decades, as you can see from the pictures, has been abandoned to itself. For the first time, the administration of Rome places among its priority objectives the rebirth of the Tiber and thus 
so with very concrete actions. It, in fact, it has appointed a delegate of the mayor to coordinate the analysis of the river fatalities and supervise the activities and projects necessary to resolve them. It has created a new office called the Special Tiber Office. It has founded a river police corps of the local police and it has taken over the management of the critical areas to restore them directly. It should be remembered that river, uh, the rivers, the Tiber, Tiber, Tiber areas are state property whose management is delegated to Lazio region. At the beginning of the process, the administration through its delegate conducted an in-depth analysis of the context that allowed it to identify the most critical areas where to intervene immediately to transform them into areas accessible to the public. Next slide, please. To start the development, it was necessary to find a very degraded area on the Tiber River and free from private interest and from request for concession in progress. Unfortunately, as you can imagine, it was not difficult. There were a lot of them. Here's what we found. Next slide, please. The Tiber in its urban course is characterized by three sections that we can call for simplicity, north, center, and south. Next slide, please. For each of the sections, the Tiber has characteristic that distinct initiatives. In the northern section, there are large green areas with numerous sports clubs overlooking the Tiber. In the center, there are the walls of containment of the Tiber flutes built in 1870. In the south, there were green areas where often there are barracks and a legal landfill, more or less visible. At the beginning of our war, the situation of the banks of the Tip Tiber are well described in the following photos. Next slide, please. If this was the state we frequently found during our surveys of the banks in the southern area of the Tiber. And it has been verified, <coughs> so it has been verified by the police that the criminals unload trucks full of waste on the banks because the delivery is free and you do not have to pay for the disposal, the waste in the, in the authorized landfill. This is the cause, the reason, because we have found this problem. Next slide, please. Moreover, the plastic landfill in the legal landfill were returning to the water as the rather level rose. Next slide, please. As a deterrent to the formation of a new landfill and settlements along the river, have been created a special department of the river police in Rome. Next slide, please. Look at the picture. You can see the state before and after the intervention started in 2018 by Rome administration. We started to choose the areas on which it intervened and we regularly them with an intense work of coordination and cleaning. Law enforcement, local police, social police offices, and environmental offices of work have been deployed. Next slide, please. Under the bridges, we often found this, as you can see in the pictures. <clears throat> we were able to clean them and keep them clean, thanks to the local police and their constant monitoring. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. During our census and the development war, we found an area that stimulated a great challenge. We didn't want to just clean and redevelop it, but we wanted to transform it into the new public riverfront park that would have summer and winter look to better meet the needs of the citizens. The photo show the site as I saw it on the first day. You can see a beautiful river landscape. Too bad, attention, too bad that hidden among the rushes that you can see in the picture was 
was trash and barracks of all of kinds. Next slide, please. These are things that we found in the Tiber area. The first intervention of the development and management of the Tiber Bank by a public entity dates back to 2018 and was denominated the Tiberius. The project was developed to demonstrate that it was possible to transform an area of riverbank completely abandoned and degraded into a healthy, beautiful, and publicly usable area. The chosen area was located by Marconi Bridge and had been left degraded and abandoned for decades. Next slide, please. So the area from landfill has become what is now known as Tiberis, the Rome's River Park, close to Ponte Marconi. Next slide, please. In order to realize Tiberis, all the vegetation that covered the surface, about one hectare, was cleaned up because it had enormous quantities, tons of quantities, quantities of waste, which was collected and transported to landfill. During the works, the bricks embankment hydraulic defense, as you can see in the center of the picture, was brought back to light, completely buried by the mud, never removed, then in 30 years had been deposited there as a consequence of the fluids. Next slide, please. After, the, after considerable uh, surviving, cleanup, planning, the Rome administration was able to open Tiberis in the summer of 2018. Next slide, please. The first edition of Tiberis dates back to August 2018. Its resolution and inauguration was accompanied by an incredible amount of media and social negative reviews. It was a diversely criticized and fundamentally, the expenditure of public money, the commitment of the administration for a public work considered unnecessary. Those, was, those who criticized used this uh, use to say that no one would use the Tiberis because it was frequented only by rats. Among the many negative reviews, there was the lack of the swimming pool. Much less negative, on the contrary, very enthusiastic was the reaction of the local population who for years had lived in contact with the river bank abandoned to itself and reduced to an abusive landfill. With the realization of the, the river beach Tiberis, the citizenship has finally had a usable public space, healthy, fun, and completely free. Tiberis was very popular because free of charge. It provided seven, uh, 40 sun baths, 20 umbrellas, eight showers, toilets, two beach volley carts. It was a fully, full accessibility, and there were full access, accessibility to, for people with disabilities, vending machines, for the snack and drinks. It is important to underline that no sightings of rats has taken place. During the setup working, it was obviously performed a proper deratization. I suppose it is useless to remember that rats are present, are present where there is organic waste, not properly disposed or not managed. Excuse Next me, Silvano, please. five more minutes left. Thank okay. you. In the following years, in the following years, next slide, next slide, please. In the following years, thanks to the partnership with association and sponsor, it was possible to draw up a new project, even more exciting. The number of users of the Tiberis for the summer 2020 has reached the incredible number of 7,400 people of all ages. The last edition of Tiberis have included all the necessary equipment for a summer recreational use of the area with a sequence of sales and microclimatic control that allow to create a series of shaded spaces. The next step is to make Tiberis permanent because for national authorization reasons, if a, articulated, if a very articulated procedure is not followed, the installation on the banks of the Tiber uh, River can last only a maximum 140 days. 
The key elements of the T-Berries 2020 project were shaded space, comfortable and, and comfortable seating, space for sport activities to beach volleyball cars, space for children's game, nebulization and water games, bathrooms of very high quality and low use of water, with staff for its continuous sanitif sanitification. Next slide, please. A dog area, afternoon cultural events, concert. Next, next slide, please. During the COVID-19 period, in order to ensure compliance with the health regulation of social distancing, the grass area has been doubled and managed with the entrance management service. An app has also been developed for the analysis of the state of crowding. Some beds, umbrellas, bathroom, and in general, all the components of tigers were continuously sanitized to ensure the safety of all citizens. Next slide, please. <clears throat> Next slide, please. Next slide, please. So, <clears throat> the the current world, so I saw before, is uh, is to take is to make Tiberis permanent. But in the meantime, the success the success of Tiberis made it possible to promote new redevelopment together with the Pontarius Association and new partners. Thus was born Piazza Tevere, located in here to Rome, another place created, created to give back to the Romans other spaces on the river. In the pictures, you can see the collection of waste in the river. First step before the setting up of Piazza Tevere. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. Next slide, please. In conclusion, I hope Tiberius has interested you and I hope you will come and visit it soon. Uh, if it's possible, show the, the, um, the movie. If I do it, I did with you with a, a piece of a light and waste, a water concept held at the Tiberis on the occasion of seasonal closure. Thank you very much. Thank you, Silvano. So we concluded exactly on time with all the presentations so we can have uh, another poll Misha, are you with us? Yes, of course. <laughs> um, okay. I would like to ask you to choose one of the four good practices you just listened to that is most transferable to your region, not most inspirational, but transferable. And uh, Natasha, will we then do the final one right now or after the questions? I would uh, have questions first and then uh, the final one as the conclusions. Uh, I think it's because there are very good statements. So, okay, good. Okay, we have more than half out of 50% already voted. Just a few seconds more. Okay, I think I'm going to add because it's somehow stopped. Just showing the results, not really commenting them. So here are your, uh, your answers. You can see them, Natasha. Is that so? Sorry, I was yeah. <laughs> muted. Yes, uh, we yes. can see. Okay. We can see them. Um, so in, in, in the previous question, we asked about inspirations and in here, um, what could also be transferable to your region. Uh, Natasha, let's go to questions and answers and then wrapping up with the final poll. Okay, I agree. So uh, I hope Mr. Uh, Eple is, Roberto is still with us. Yes. Uh, yes. Ah, okay, super, because we have some questions for you. Uh, do you plan uh, also other activities with your partners? Uh, as an aspiration to raise awareness. 
Yes, of course. I do not really understand uh, the sense of the question, but yes, of course, any activity which is linked to promote the river as uh, a place for uh, activities uh, and uh, also to protect these rivers and to bring it closer to the citizens uh, and inhabitants is welcomed. Yeah, any uh, very different and various uh, things we are doing with our partners, even if you can't swim, you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, uh, the next one. Uh, do you do you have any example of cities where swimming was forbidden once, and then uh, then started to participate uh, to the big jump and have developed long term swimming? Now. Yeah. Yes. Of course. Yes. Yeah. And you gave some examples. Yeah. Many examples, even. <clears throat> but maybe I just. Uh, should uh, you should ask uh, our friends from uh, Saint Maur de Fossé because this is a good example. Uh, they started to do big jumps uh, in 2005 every year and against against everybody. You know, nobody couldn't believe that it would be possible one day. And now, after years and years of uh, public work and opinion building, uh, they are just, uh, I think, uh, next year, maybe, allowed to swim. And we have other places like that, including Berlin, as uh, the example I showed at the end of my presentation, and Dresden also, and many other smaller places. But it takes years before to rise the, you know, to rise the, mm -hmm. to rise the, let's say, the acceptation. And also maybe to have to quote the quality of the river. In many cases, this was uh, blocking Yes, uh, thank you. Uh, you know, they were when you were talking, then then the questions were coming. So it yep. these questions were arised before you <laughs> explained everything uh, in your presentation. So um, uh, the third question is: What do you think of encouraging? Um, oh, uh, sorry. Before, uh huh. Ah, boating, sorry, I couldn't read it. What do you think of encouraging boating um, before being ready uh, to swim in city rivers? Yeah, of course, this can be a tool. This can be a way to promote it. Um, I have also negative examples on that. Uh, some rivers uh, in cities, they are full of pedal oil, you understand? Mm -hmm. And so this is maybe not the sense. Uh, it's a question of how many, yes? But it's very good thing, I think, to help to discover the river to everybody with boats. It can be managed in a very good way, but not just make a business on that. Mm -hmm. Okay, here uh, in the chat, you can all read what Masha from Ljubljansk Baria Nature Park uh, 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 posted. Be uh, perhaps you can read it on your own, but it's... Uh, something that uh, she remembered when listening to you, uh, Roberto, that um, that they have a similar event for the River Ljubljanica on the World Water Day. And uh, we then we celebrate the birthday of the river. Um, uh, and uh, just a second, every year, all the municipalities that lie along the river in the Ljubljana marshes, that means uh, uh, seven uh, seven municipalities and uh, something more about this so um, yeah. everyone can read it uh, then uh, we uh, thank you very much for answer for your answers mm, then we go to Rovin, uh, Romina sorry um, there are two questions for you uh, do you also target tourists from the region or outside the region thank you for the question First of all, I would like to say that this our event is made up a little bit different. We are quite used to, to buy a service, but in this case, it's not a service, not a touristic service. We invite people uh, to celebrate this event uh, while participating. So, of course, uh, everyone can join uh, from the other banks and districts and cities to this uh, event, uh, just renting uh, an equipment or bringing their own equipment because all the activities on the riversides are free of charge. So just on their own, they can come on their own. Okay. 
Thank you. And the second question is, how long did it take to prepare the event? How did you manage to involve the local initiatives? Um, we tried to involve uh, by direct contact, of course, uh, whom we already know, then uh, expanding the uh, relation and uh, uh, contacting with the uh, cultural organizations directly and inviting them uh, to bring the activities, uh, workshops on the banks of the river and also with local communities. So we made uh, very good contacts now. We have, so I think it will be easier and easier. <laughs> uh, mm -hmm. And uh, we were um, doing all this uh, on, uh, started uh, in the middle of June and uh, the event was organized on the uh, 22nd of August. So okay. quite short time. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So uh, then we, uh, we don't have any questions anymore, but just another uh, comment um, by Masha to, uh, uh, to uh, Celia's, um, when listening to Celia's uh, presentation. And she wrote, the big cultural walks are similar to our annual march on the Ljubljana marshes. Uh, here too, the route was the same in the first years when we joined as a park. We moved the route throughout the park and in recent years, the main organizer of this event returned the hike to the original route. Uh, the event is uh, co-financed by uh, Ljubljana Tourism. So, uh, thank you for all your questions and answers. Uh, thank you to all speakers. And now we can go to the final uh, vote, uh, not vote, sorry, poll. <laughs> it is a vote in a, <laughs> in a sense, but yeah, uh, just to wrap it up and then perhaps some words of conclusions as well. Thank you. Misha. Okay. Uh, we tried in this final poll to make some statements that somehow or um, summing up some of the possible conclusions and we would like you to choose one uh let me launch it one of the statements that best describes your immediate most pressing challenges in the field of environmental sustainability in river tourism so we are covering all aspects of sustainability and sustainable mobility and environment um, protection please choose just one um, the answers are really important also for us uh, when we are preparing the guidelines um, as one of the outputs within Star Cities uh, projects for this particular topic, of course. I would just like to point out that, of course, it's difficult to sum up all the challenges. So you have a possibility to say our challenges are elsewhere and do share them in the chat or uh, speak. We, we, we still have some minutes at the end. Okay, 40% of you voted, so let's wait a little bit longer. nearly 70%, so just a little bit more. Okay, I think it's stopped. We have um, sharing results. Um, 
Let me see which one is the strongest. Uh, 44% of you, that means 14 people said, we believe tourism largely helps in our efforts to protect and enhance environment and heritage, but we need to measure it more actively and increase its management in terms of direct inflows and carrying capacities, use of new technologies and so on. So it does help, but we need to be more active and proactive. Then the second uh, most um, voted answer is, we need to move from sustainability and strategic frameworks to concrete and operational uh, sustainability actions. So we need a kind of a system or a platform, a model, something we talked about and heard good practices yesterday. And then the same share of answers that is four people, uh, 13 uh, yeah, 13 percent each, we need to foremost increase relevance of sustainable actions for users. So this is something we heard yesterday that uh, some of you said that there is not so much value seen for the visitors or this is not the prime motive to choose. Um, I think when we talked about or learned about the ferry boats. Um, so this is also important to communicate this um, to users so that decide also on the basis of sustainability practices and the same percentage we need above all to motivate businesses for more sustainable practices. So interesting answers. The challenge is um, uh -huh, and none of you said that challenges uh, lie somewhere outside. Um, but the partners will be having a thematic workshop tomorrow and we'll be talking about this um, in more details. We'll have enough space, enough time uh, to go into it. So for me, this was quite interesting, Natasha. Uh, yeah, thank <laughs> so you. I'm Amish. giving the, the floor back to you. Okay, thank you. Just uh, two more sentences or let's say conclusions because um, I think that we realized that the quality, and we know already, we knew it already before, but it was just the, uh, again confirmed today that the quality of the environment is essential to tourism. And therefore we need wise and responsible to tourism planning and management. If this is the case, then we can speak about a good and balanced, let's say relation between tourism on one hand and environment on the other, which leads to sustainable tourism uh, development. And uh, we should also keep in mind that tourism is developed in a way that is friendly to the environment, to local communities and also to uh, visitors. So uh, this is all from my side for uh, the, at the moment. And I would give the mic to Camille so uh, our lead partner to say the, con the conclusion words, please Camille. Thank you, Natasha. Uh, I would like to, to thank again uh, all the speakers of today and uh, yesterday and the uh, Lubiana team for the, the organization of this uh, event. We hope you uh, found interesting good practices and interesting ideas. Uh, that, uh, as Misha said, we will uh, discuss uh, tomorrow with uh, Star Cities partners uh, during uh, a thematic workshop. And uh, I would also like to thank a lot all the partners, uh, because when the COVID-19 crisis uh, came uh, one year ago, we were planning to do a lot of uh, travels uh, for uh, three different learning sessions on the ground, on the field in uh, Ljubljana, in uh, our region in Val de Marne, France, and also in Hamburg. And everything has been cancelled. And uh, after a few months, let's say, of uh, discussions, etc., uh, we managed to, to transform our learning program online uh, through these virtual sessions. And uh, and uh, we are very happy to see that uh, it works. Of course, it's, it's not the same that to be on the field and we hope to, uh, to do some, uh, some travels in, uh, in the next uh, months or years to, to confirm and to meet on the ground all the stakeholders. But at least uh, we managed to, to carry on this uh, European project uh, without uh, the possibility to travel. So thanks a lot for 
all the partners, uh, all the teams for your co commitment and uh, engagement in the project, even in these uh, very uh, critical and um, exceptional times. <laughs> and uh, I think uh, that uh, we can still um, say that um, uh, the good point of this uh, online session was the possibility to welcome much more people that on the field. Uh, we are uh, 50 today. We were, I think, 60 yesterday. So of course, it, uh, it, uh, it would have not been possible to do like uh, to do so uh, on the field. So I think it's uh, it was an opportunity to to spread the uh, the discussions and the presentations uh, of uh, this project uh, widely and to invite much more participants to join us. So thanks a lot. And uh, we, we invite you to, uh, to follow the, the project and to maybe to subscribe to our newsletter to be informed because uh, the next event uh, we will organize will be the European conference to present uh, the results of our first, first phase of, um, of uh, good practices exchange and to present the action plans that all partners will uh, develop in the next few months. So we say you uh, uh, goodbye and uh, see you in a few months for this European conference uh, that we will uh, organize meanwhile. Thanks and uh, have a good uh, rest of the day. Thank you, Camille. So goodbye to everyone and thank you again uh, I hope you enjoyed it and found something uh, fruitful for something good, inspiring, maybe for your daily work. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.